You're probably wondering, what the f*** is that? But to understand, we're gonna have to start from the very, very beginning. I got a Hulu subscription the other day because, you know, capitalism, everyone's on Netflix, and I was like, let me see what Hulu's doing. When I came across the movie Appendage, what really caught my little eye was the baby hands on the movie poster. Their gross little stubs drew me in. I mean, they're kind of cute, right? No? I didn't know what the movie was going to be about, but I had a feeling, mm, a buy, that this movie was going to change my life. And it changed it all right, for the worst. Our main character is Hannah. She's your average white girl, which no shade, no tea. You know, I love her. Not really. I actually don't love her, you know, but shout out, you know, to my white people. Love you guys. Okay. You know what I mean? No. Um, but Hannah's trying to be a fashion designer in New York, except she deals with a ton of anxiety, which we're going to see later on as we keep going through the movie. She has a friend named Esther and a boyfriend named Kaylin, who is none other than Mr. Sunny with a Chance from Disney Channel. If you know, you know. But in the very beginning, Hannah's having dinner with her parents. They're talking about Amsterdam or something. Meanwhile, Hannah tosses back her whole cup of wine like it's nothing. Her mom just looks at her with the fakest nice smile, like, Don't embarrass yourself, sweetie. Hannah smiles politely, but she's upset. That's when she starts picking her cuticles, breathing heavily. She's she's essentially having a full-blown panic attack to the point where we hear a... Okay, maybe it's not that dramatic, but there's these crazy thuds coming from Girlie's stomach and no one hears this ruckus during this quiet Sunday lunch. Instead, Hannah's left wondering what the f*** is happening to her. So, that would honestly be my 13th reason because there's no way I'm gonna act cool after that. Remember when I said Hannah worked as a fashion designer? Well, the boss she worked for is a total ass who contributes to Hannah's anxiety. Pasta sauce? She has to stand there and tell this man she pricked her stupid finger. At this point, her boss might as well say, not only is your finger stupid, but the dress is giving, mmm, como se dice, um, plagiarism. You would have thought she stole the whole design, but no, someone did a wrap dress last year, so she got hit with the red sticker, which essentially means her design was booty butt trash. After the assassination of Hannah's self-esteem, she goes to the bathroom to breathe, where she has her second encounter with the demon in her stomach. I'm sure we've all been there, except Hannah's not okay. She lifts up her shirt to see what's going on, only to see a bloody bump on her stomach. All we really learn is that Esther went to college with Kaylin, Hannah's boyfriend, and that Esther set them up. Yet for some odd reason, Hannah has a problem with their friendship. And I'm just gonna say it straight up, it's her insecurities. So just remember that for later. Speaking of later, Kaylin has a special night planned for the two. But um, when I think of a special night, I don't think of tiny monster trucks. And based on Hannah's reaction, neither did she. My mom came up with this game when I was a kid, right before she died. Well, we're both assholes for that. Yet, she goes from feeling like an ass to shaking ass. Kaylin's trying to touch her all over until his hand gets close to her bloody wound. That I honestly don't even know if she bandaged yet. This makes her stop because how is she going to explain herself? So she gives this bad excuse like, Yeah, I gotta go, you know, work stuff, but um, bye! Hannah gets home and she's sketching her sorrows away when she feels something inside of her stomach practically kicking her over the dang room. Again, I would have jumped, I would not be here, I... But like I said, Hannah's better than me because she lifts up her shirt to see a gremlin looking baby popping out of her. Not only that, but it talks to her. I'll just call this thing Grem for short, okay? So Grem low-key is saying things that Hannah was already thinking like being an original pace option. Hannah has no idea what to do. Again, I don't know about you guys, but Gremlin to no, I'm I'm like this. This is me. This is actual footage of me. <laughs> <laughs> Grim is tired of this, honestly, so he separates from Hannah rather aggressively, and her good sis passes out. She wakes up several minutes later looking to see where Grim went when this little sh jumps on Hannah. <laughs> Having nowhere else to hide the little gremlin, she puts it in her closet. Kind of like the trauma she's storing and not addressing. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, but I sure as hell know what symbolism looks like. Hannah goes to clean her wound when she thinks, hey, this would be a sick dress design. And it was clear. It was clear, in fact, that sis ate. She ate. Because look at the difference. Girlie went from the help to the Met Gala. But she can't ignore what literally just happened moments ago. So, like any regular person, she takes a trip to the dermatologist. So you likely have dual DNA from vanishing twin syndrome. For sure, she ate her twin when she was in the womb. Also, why is she in this dark ass dungeon room? Like, is the dermatologist this dark? Like, I've never been, but like you would assume it would be clear as day so they can see your skin, they can pop your pimples, but it's like, it's so dark. How can you even see anything? 
Hannah's out with Esther having fun, getting drunk, you know, doing what she does best, while the appended in her closet is at home banging on the door for dear life. Hannah's insecurities get the best of her when she notices her boyfriend blowing up Esther's phone, which again, Esther and Kaylin were best friends since college, so of course, Kaylin's gonna text Esther. Like, come on. She gets home, and this is where we get a good look at this uggo. You can't connect with anyone. You're a self-obsessed, pathetic freak. Bro really thought his alien versus predator looking ass could intimidate Hannah, so she knocks him clean out and throws him in a random basement under her apartment building. Like, I'm not even sure how much of a threat this gremlin is supposed to be at this point. Appendage feels so seriously unserious at times. Hannah gradually stumbles upon a random Reddit group that had an address to an abandoned building, and this really solidified how stupid this woman really is, at least in my eyes. Because who? Who in their right mind would go to an address posted to a Reddit board? Not only that, an abandoned building, like I said, like, look at this building would you come here tell me now quickly tell me would you come no you wouldn't you wouldn't but you know what hannah is that girl and she's here then when she gets there it's just a whole bunch of people with the same condition as her which you know that's what she wanted except we hide it and sedate it It'll cost 150 a week for the materials. She just accepts to pay this random old man 150 a week. Who knows what could be in that needle? I mean, is it that easy to make money off of people? If so, I'm, I'm in the wrong business, bro. Hannah befriends a woman from the meeting who is also... She's... Guys, she's the love of my life. Claudia. Oh, the things I would do to this woman. You are gay. She starts to spend a lot of time with Claudia, actually. More than Esther or her own boyfriend at that point. This starts to create friction between the three of them, and it only gets progressively worse when she tries to explain to Kaylin these strange things she's experiencing. Which, by the way, he asked to know these things. Okay, it's called an appendage. It's because I have dual DNA and there are other people- Hand, 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 please. What? What's the point of this man asking what's wrong with Hannah if he won't even give her the benefit of the doubt? And he's the only main character that's a black man and I was like really rooting for him, Mr. Sonny with the chance, but honestly, I look like I give a fuck because I don't. Ain't no way. Later on in the movie, he looks up mental illnesses, but won't look up dual DNA. Not too long after, we also discover that Hannah has a history of attempted human deletion if you catch my drift, which is why her mother treats her in this weird way of like, Kinda not caring about literally anything she feels or does or says. Always Hannah's fault and I guess this is why. I don't know. Like, <laughs> is that okay? No, but okay. Claudia tells Hannah that she actually talks to her own appendage and she tries to convince Hannah. Actually, not tries. She convinces Hannah that speaking to your appendage is the new hot trend. It's your new psychic. These appendages have the ability of hypnosis. So it's not like this can go wrong, right? <laughs> you keep a monster in the basement right next to a huge steaming bowl of foreshadowing. And in good old Hannah fashion, she believes everything everyone tells her and gets completely hypnotized by the gremlin. Congratulations on being the world's dumbest person, Hannah. Really breaking records here. After she wakes up, the gremlin has mysteriously vanished. It's disappeared, but you know what's more important than finding that little shit? Expressing her troubled past with her beloved mother because there's nothing quite like the loving words of a caring parent. Did you ever think about what it feels like to want to do something like that to yourself? Oh, because I'm not fucked up. Ain't no way you just said that to your own daughter. You really just said that to your own daughter, like straight to her face. No jokes. You were dead serious. Ain't no way, bro. Now, from this point on in the movie, things become incredibly disturbing to watch. We get a shot of a third evolution appendage hugging up on Hannah and the thing just... <laughs> It just looks like it stinks, dude. Just smelly and nasty. And Hannah isn't even flinching. Like, I don't, I think she's so tired at this point that she's just like, freak it. Then the appendage shoots its tentacle tongue thing in the back of its neck. I didn't actually think it was gonna have a tentacle thing just like Alien. But I, I really wish this movie would have ended here because it just gets more ridiculous. The appendage takes the full form of Hannah and it's revealed that the appendages are seeking world domination. As you know, typically most things are in life, it's robots and then I guess it's the appendages. Hannah 2.0 and appendage her new best friend from earlier you know the love of my life and appendage all the people from the meeting itself uh, you know they were actually really well-rounded people appendages so 
So Kaylin's at his apartment, meeting up with who he thinks is Hannah, even though she seems different. He does nothing. This man could feel that there was something different and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna sleep with her anyways. This man is useless, okay? He even goes to take a shower like everything is peaches and cream. On the other hand, Hannah 2.0 can feel the real Hannah getting better. In fact, it's slowly killing her. So to prevent her death, she begins to feed off of him. It's clear that Esther and Hannah have to save this hoe. Hannah goes in through the vent to unlock Kaylin's front door when Claudia 2.0 snatches her by her blonde weave. This gives Hannah an opportunity to fight off Claudia and go save her boyfriend in the other room, which he honestly should have been dead a long time ago. Hannah 2.0 has been sucking his blood for the past like what 20 minutes and he's still alive? Like whatever, it's fine. When they get there, Esther is frozen in place. She just stands there like a deer in headlights while Hannah goes to the other room to grab scissors and cuts her appendages tentacle from killing Caitlyn. And when you think this can't get any weirder, Hannah kisses her appendage. You what? This is a high key WTF moment, but after watching this movie way too many times, I, I get it, you know, I'm, I'm a little sympathetic, you feel me? I get it. Hannah's killing her negative thoughts with love. And this gets further exemplified at the end of the movie when we see Hannah actually taking care of the baby appendage rather than sedating it. So that's essentially the whole entire movie. Was it worth my hour, two hours, three hours in movie notes? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. In fact, I'll be seeking monetary compensation for this brutal waste of time. 